Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Dweebo here with a new video with a subject I've been wanting to talk about lately because it's getting kind of uh, dangerous. People, people's lives are getting affected because of that, and that is review scores. Um, recently, Breath of the Wild came out. We will be talking about that very soon on our podcast, we, the Dweebros podcast, if you want to check that out, um, at the end of this month. But somebody gave that game a bad review, and that's kind of why I wanted to make this video, but also kind of how I do my reviews as well. Um, and I think I'll go into more, you know, there, there'll be detail with the other guys, what they think uh, regarding reviews, but I wanted to kind of talk about kind of what I think and, um, you know, with, with my channel as well. And with this Breath of the Wild that came out, it was getting hundreds, you know, high 90s, very high 90s, and then um, a person named Jim Sterling, um, he makes videos, I, I like his videos and stuff, some of the stuff he makes, uh, you know, some some I agree with, some I don't, that's everybody in life, but um, he put out his review and he gave it, a, I think, a 70 or 71 or something like that. Now, here's two things, here's my thoughts on that, and I'll probably talk about it again on the podcast, but they, I, there's people that, you know, make reviews when games comes out and they either put it like you know we'll put it lower than everybody else and that can be for two reasons one they genuinely feel that hey you know there's some issues here and I want to give this a 70 and that's kind of how I'm giving the benefit of the doubt to Jim Sterling I have not read the review because <laughs> the I, I hate to be that kind of guy that says well I didn't read it I didn't do it but I, I'm trying to stay away from spoilers and such so I don't even want to read anything about like, I ran into this in the game or, you know, I'm trying to, to stay away from that. Well, so I didn't read the review, but this is, this is kind of going over not just him, but other reviewers that may do this. They can genuinely feel this way, like, hey, I had issues, this is not my, not my kind of game or what have you. And I, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt and I'm saying that's what he's done. Um, I might be wrong. The other thing that could be happening here, and very well, it could even be a mix of the two. They, he, Jim kind of not liked this. There was, I think there was another uh, developer that was in the Metacritic stuff too um, when I was, I was seeing that, that reviewed it kind of lower than everybody else. I think he gave it a 60-ish or something like that. Well, it can be also, you're seeing all these 100s, all these 100s, all these 100s, you go there almost like, did anyone dislike this game? And then if you see that, I usually will kind of say, I will definitely read into that. Like, why? what didn't that person like about this game? Or, you know, what are their issues? Because seeing 100 across the board, you're like, okay, we get it. Like, the game's good to you. <laughs> we don't need to read. But with a bad review, it's like, what went wrong? Like, what the heck do you have to say wrong with? Oh, I didn't think about this. Or, you know. So... Yeah, that's interesting. So I, what I'm saying is I think that maybe a part of it, though, is to be kind of contrary to everybody else or against everybody else's score for the fact that it gets you clicks. Um, maybe that's not was in his attention, but I don't know. I, th I feel like there's a mix of that in, in purposely reviewing a game so highly regarded, you know, for so many people, and then one person kind of, you know, stands out, you want to click on that. And it's, it's, it's uh, you know, you got to think about kind of the revenue from the ad clicks, too. So, uh, this could be a mix of that. It could be a mix of genuinely didn't like the game or genuinely want to put food on the table for my kids. That kind of mix there. So, that's kind of my thoughts on it. Um, let me know what you guys think. And also, my review scores, if you haven't seen the video, I'll link it below or I will forget and you'll just have to look on my channel. But I made a video explaining, I switched gears I, at, at first and I'm probably going to keep switching gears, not on this, but maybe on the format of my videos for reviews. But when I first started um, doing our reviews, I just kind of just talked about the game that I was playing, you know, didn't really give a score because I, I was seeing the issues with the scoring system. People were saying, it's screwing up the Metacritic score. I think that was part of the issue with the Jim, Qu Jim Sterling, Jimquisition, whatever you want to call him and his, you know, that's his uh, kind of video series. But they're messing up the Metacritic score. <laughs> they're, they're screwing up the Metacritic score, which I don't care. Like, people are um, 
messing with the site. That's I didn't even give the freaking context. So he, people were um, it's calling denial of service attack when a lot of people are trying to like they send all these computers to freaking shut down a site. They're all trying to request the page at a time and shut down the whole website. And that's what happened to him after his Breath of the Wild score, which I think is so stupid. Such a waste of time, such a hilariously waste of time that um, I do not care what people give a score. They could give Breath of the Wild a freaking two. Uh, spoiler alert, I like the game. Um, they could give it a freaking two, and it's like, oh, well, I, I would like to read why you, why you thought that, you know. I'm going to have a difference in opinion there, but uh, it might be valid, or it might be that you wanted to get clicks. I don't know. We'll see. So... I made a, a first video, I think it's still up, where I was like, games should be almost like on should I play it or not? Like, is this worth it or not? That's what I did for Xenoblade Chronicles X. Started that thinking, hey, this is my format for reviews. I think this will be good. But then I was thinking, you know, it's, it, I, there is kind of a scale that you can put these games on. Like, you can play it could be a freaking, like, or Ocarina of Time, but it also can be... Something simple like, uh, I'm trying to think, like Splatoon. Not saying that Splatoon's bad. I love I think it's a blast. But those games are wildly different. And um, there's more detail that can kind of go into that review. It kind of set them apart. Um, I like the game Deadly Premonition. I would give that maybe a you can play it or a but. <laughs> uh, on my scale, um, my scale goes from... Uh, complete booty, but um, you can play it rad and classic. I would put Deadly Premonition maybe on that you can play it to but, but I love that game and will play it over and over again. And like, I personally love it, but I'm trying to view it, you know, in the scale of games in general, kind of the context of the time. It's kind of, it's, and I think that's one of the part that's hard is people will you know, always look at these scores and not look at the context of the time when they came out or, you know, in the context of games in general. Is it personal tastes that are more involved here? It's really hard, almost to the point where um, I really enjoyed uh, EGM Magazine back in the day, Electronic Gaming Monthly. They turned into 1UP Gaming and then they got shut down, but they used to do something, and I feel like other game magazines might still do this to this day, they did it to where they would have several reviewers they'd have about four or five people and they would show their scores so some people some guy might have a 70 there he, he personally didn't like it. he didn't you know get drawn to it somebody else they might have like a couple 90s in there you never know so i don't know maybe that's a better decision to have multiple viewpoints on a game maybe that's something to look into i don't know just kind of bouncing off some ideals so i went from that to i made that scale because i started thinking about uh, tens and like having seven point and decimal points and stuff waste like what a waste like round up or get out of here you're wasting everybody's time with like 73s metacritic i get it because they're doing an average you're gonna have a kind of a decimal or like um i don't know i don't think they do decimal it's actually like in between basically 100 so 90 you can have 91 92 etc and i see that worth but for me personally you know a scale of a 10, you have unused stuff. You won't maybe use 2s and 3s and 4s. And usually you just see 60s to 100s. That's all you usually see nowadays. People getting reviews. So I was like, okay, well, we can kind of separate this up in 5s. I think five, uh, 5s have been kind of a standard for a long time. I was like, okay, I'll go with 5. But what do those 5 mean? Like, what does a 5 mean? What does a 4 mean? And I've seen, like, sites like Destructoid try to explain that in, like, a paragraph or whatever. I chose to give it a more colorful, um, very easily kind of more, you almost know immediately what I'm talking about when I give um, a uh, score, my score system to a game. At least that's my hope and that's my uh, goal. And I gave, um, so I, gave, I set that up and I did an Uncharted review like that I did something else, I believe. I think Uncharted, though, was my one where I was really happy with it. I did narration. I did all that. If you checked it out or not, I don't know. But the more I thought about it, I was thinking, like, this game came out, like, 
at that point, I, I had beat it. I wanted to fully beat it before I reviewed it. And that, and that was an issue I came with the Gravity Rush with my recent review is where I hadn't beat it before I gave it the review score. I, I, I basically knew how I felt three-fourths of the way freaking through. It's not going to change that much unless the ending was like this new paradigm of freaking life on Earth. But um, with the Uncharted review, I put so much time into it and it's like... People can already go view an IGN video like this. People can already go view a GameSpot that got it. That you know they got um, freaking press titles or whatever it's called, like early release copies, review title, review copies. Frick, I'm an idiot. Review copies beforehand, so their review already goes up maybe the a couple days before. Like so, I don't even have the game in my possession, let alone played it. What's the worth in my review? What's the worth in kind of what I am to say? And I like to view, there's a couple YouTubers I'm subscribed to where um, I do value their opinion and I want to see what they think versus what an IGN reviewer that might have been paid <laughs> to review something. That GameSpot viewer might have, you know, reviewer might have been paid to, you know, hey, they, they, they're advertising our site, you know, give a better review. So YouTube is kind of what I go to to kind of see that. I, I do like to go to Metacritic and see like the personal like user scores with uh you know, reviewer scores. I do like to see that and like people that do play a lot of games and hear their thoughts. But what can I do? Like, what do I give differently? And what, you know, I'm trying to still experiment and I'm still trying to find my like kind of a uh, format that I want to do. And if you guys want to maybe give me some pointers or what you guys have liked in my reviews or not liked, or maybe you haven't seen them at all. I don't know. Or what you've liked in other people's reviews or whatever, because, um, after that Uncharted review, I said, well, this is so, I'm putting this video together, I, I'm spending this time on it, I'm really happy with how it turned out, but, like, is this useful? <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was, I don't know, but then I did the Gravity Rush 2 review, which I hadn't beat it yet, I got it kind of after release anyways, for my birthday, after the game had released, so I was kind of late to start, and I thought, well, I kind of already know how I feel about this game, what if I just review it now in a different format, where... You know, you see, I had, I had to show, like, I was wanting to show, like, the controller, like, there was gyro stuff involved. Because I put, I put me in the corner. But the gameplay, you know, front and center, it was the main display. And almost did like I was sitting down and having a conversation with you. Almost like I would my friends. Like, hey, this is what this does. This is how you play this. You know, this is how the gameplay is. And I kind of liked that a lot. Um, but I don't know... You know, I'm still experimenting, I guess, with my reviews. And I guess they'll just keep being these weird formats till I find something I like. So, it's it's hard to, you know, you know, even having the score, you know, I give rads a lot. I give, you know, you know, in that first video I explained what you can play. I explained what each, what I would put in each category to kind of give an ideal of what those scores mean. Um... But it's tough. It's tough to just say, I give this game a rad, um, when sometimes you might say, like, you know, a Ratchet & Clank would be a rad, but so would Uncharted 4. Like, a Ratchet & Clank 1 was really fun, but I'd almost put Uncharted 4 definitely above that, like, in terms of, you know, gameplay and especially graphics, all that kind of stuff. So, it's hard, but I personally feel like a review score, I can tell you, like, a game's a 7, you might go, ah, oh, well, I don't know if that's worth my money. Or I can tell you it's a rad... And it might be a seven. It might be like not the most spectacular game in the world, but you might still have a blast with it. Whereas my rad, you know, calling it rad versus calling it a seven, seven point two, seventy eight point seven. You know, what I mean, like that to me gives a more of a kind of a um, thought behind it. And like, is this game actually good? should you play it's almost like a should you play it thing and then you can play it is a hey i really enjoyed this game but it's very average it's done what other games have done before i don't know so i'm i i'm still I, i'm happy with that scale i at least got the freaking scale i like that i can tell people like i give this that score i give this you know that but um I'm, i don't like the scores i think the scores are so generic and um People are freaking out about the Metacritic scores on freaking Breath of the Wild. Buzz off. Um, and, uh, yeah, so let me go what you guys think. Uh, this is kind of a longer video. Sorry for the rant, but I had to get off my chest. I will bring this up to the other guys on the podcast. Maybe we'll get 
you know, more thoughts in on that as well. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to only like my, give, you know, you can either give the YouTube scale of this a dislike or a like. You know what I say? Thumbs up or you break the Metacritic score. You're going to break the Metacritic, do you want to break my freaking the like and dislike scale? Then I will, um, be upset so review this like i'm just kidding don't freaking do anything you don't want to do buzz off to me saying that thanks for watching and i will see you soon where's the where's the freaking button for this